Okay, I guess we can start. So, last time we were looking at this. Uh, so I'm going through the demos. Um, these are these are the, giving you demos of the projects that you'll be doing in this course. And we saw that we saw the Halloween simulation where we had only one person um, interact with the simulation, um, and then we made it collaborative, where we had multiple people interacting with the simulation. Right, and we looked at various issues in this, and uh, one of them was the overall architecture. So we have a server, uh, and I have three clients: okay, Alice, Bob, and Kathy. And the server was going to do two things: it was going to allow the clients to get in touch with each other, and it was also going to perhaps relay the information. Uh, among the clients, okay? So messages were not going directly from a client to another client, but they were going uh, uh, through the relay server, right? And uh, we saw the, uh, and, we, and we were going to do the first assignment, we saw the many ways to do this kind of com the communication with the server. So the, there's the overall architecture and there's the communication abstractions you use. So um, we looked at uh, we looked at this thing working. So if I go and say move 50 minus 50, everybody moves, okay? So there's some communication going on. We saw that there was an issue of uh, consistency that if, uh, okay, so before I do that, actually, let me just show you the effect of asynchrony on it. So I, I have to... Kathy... Uh, um, okay, so let's see how should I do this. If I go in a loop, okay, so if I go and add a delay, let's do that. Okay. I go here, this is Bob, this is Alice. I'm going to go and add delay between my client and the server, every layer, okay? So my send delay, let's go and make it 1,000. Okay, one second. Now, when I go and move, move this, now let's say move this 0, minus 10, what do you expect to be the response of this user and, this, and the other users? So I've added a delay. Right? So that the delay means that my network to the server is slow. So it's going to take one second for my data to go from, from my client to the, to, the, to the server. So the client should move and then everyone else should eventually move. Eventually move. Okay. And that's because, why, should, why shouldn't the client not also get delayed? Because the data are going, because... The doesn't know the network is slow. Right. right. But is the client waiting for the... Uh, some kind of acknowledgement then, some kind of, so this is asynchronous, right? So because it's asynchronous, right, it's exactly what you expected. In fact, let me do this in a loop. Uh, let me go and execute, and we'll go and try to get some performance issues here, so I'm going to just execute a loop that you know, things things will, are going to go out of the screen, but they'll come back also. But I'll just make a bunch of moves. So you can see that the other guys are catching up and they finally caught up. Okay, the, the, the guy was going around, okay? Execute, execute some. This is just some command I wrote to execute a bunch of things. Okay? I was supposed to get some statistics. I'm, one, I'm wondering why I didn't get them. Uh, but maybe after E, I don't give. Okay, but you can... Let me go and just do something else and see what happens. Yeah. I did some commands. It took 297 as the time. I'm going to undo the commands. It took 406. I'm going to do the commands again. It took 312 this time. So this shows you that, you know, when you time things, you don't always get reliable data. Not too bad, right? It's off, off by... Uh, this is my tool to make sure I um, 
I don't work too hard. <laughs> uh, it'll tell me to rest my eyes. You know, so this is a great tool, by the way, for us nerds. We just, you know. Okay. So um, now, so that was the performance. You know, this whole idea of scalability that we want to be able to write scalable stuff. Um, asynchrony is a big key to scalability. Okay. Let's look at consistency again. So uh, if I go and this lack of real screen real estate is a real issue here. And when I made my demos, I didn't realize that they were going to get shrunk. I need the relayer controller. I think it's right here. Okay. So now I'm going to go and put some asynchrony. And I'm going to say, uh, sorry, put, no, put some uh, wait for send. I'm going to put, let's get this out. And I'll go and say move minus three zero. He moved. You see that there's there's a process that I, uh, you see, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to now say proceed. This guy moved. I say proceed again. This guy moved. Okay. So you see the data are going from, going from this guy to this guy through this particular relay. And this guy did not wait for the message to get bounced back. Okay, this guy basically just did the operation and, and then sent the data out. Right? So you get a little bit of the idea of uh, why uh, this, this guy was, yeah, so this guy, this guy is really not waiting in any way possible. But we saw the problem. Yeah, go ahead. Why? Right. Why? Why they moved? Uh, they didn't. Yeah, at different times. Because what happened was, I put wait for send here. Okay, so after there's a loop. There's a loop in this uh, particular relay that after each send it goes and waits, for me to say proceed. Okay. So it sends data one by one, right? The connection between each each pair of processes is one on, is 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 a, a single way. So what's how am I faking this? I'm faking this by putting a, a, putting a little statement, putting a little statement there saying wait after each send, and I have to send one at a time. Right? I can also do wait for receive. In which case, I'll just wait once for the receive message, mm -hmm. and then it'll then I then I won't then it'll just to go to both of them. But I wanted to just show you how it really happens in slow motion. Okay. okay. Now, and 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 we saw the problem of uh, consistency, right? The two people can send can can act at the same time, and the two states can diverge as a result. Right? We saw last time. If you, I'll put the video on screen, but if you didn't, didn't follow that. Um, and let me just show you what happens if I go in now. Don't send the data immediately. Okay? And I echo back. Okay, so what is that saying? Don't, from the UI, don't send it to my local model immediately. Send a message to the server. Server will echo back the message to me, and at that point, take the action. Okay? So let's go and do this again. Move minus 7, 0, so that you see it. Nothing happened. Not even here. Bob moved. Alice moved. Kathy moved. Okay? I guess the order in which this... Let's try it, try it again. Let's go back to this position. So, and now you see here what this is. This is a thread waiting here, which I unblock. So, Bob, Alice, Kathy. Okay. And 
now they will always be in sync. That means all operations will get executed in the same order. So what was the problem we had before? The problem we had was that Alice can't. I used to have these controls here, but they just get hidden. I put them here, but then I can't map. But let's go and this is Bob. Here's Alice, okay? Now what I'm going to do is wait for send. I'm going to make Alice block before Alice sends the data, okay? And I'm going to make Bob block also, okay? And Maybe the relayer I can unblock because there's too many blockings going on. Anybody remember? <laughs> Finding these windows is so tricky now. Some. Okay, well, let's just go with this. And well, but I do need that to unblock that. I need this guy around also. I don't need this guy any longer, so let's get rid of this. I don't need this guy any longer, so let's get rid of this. Somewhere here is another window. Don't need this guy. Ha! Finally. So I'll get rid of this now. Okay, now let's go and do something conflicting. This guy, Alice is going to move this, move minus 10, 0. Okay? But, this, but the uh, message is not sent so far. This guy is going to do a take 1. Okay, message is not sent. Now what should happen? Remember, you can only take something if your feet are in the, in the path. Okay, so when I go and say proceed to Alice, what's going to happen? It's going to move Alice 7, right? And when Bob's take ha occurs, what will happen? It's out of the way. It's out of out of the way. And both of them will see the same problem. Right? So let's go and see. Hopefully that's what's going to happen. So I say proceed. Okay. Uh, did Bob not move? Okay, let's say proceed. Bob moved also. And see the message, cannot take cupcakes. Cannot take cupcakes at every screen. That means there's an error everywhere. Okay? So they're all in sync, but because of the conflict, un something unexpected happened. Okay? So, but, but the more, main issue is that this is... Uh, this is... Uh, uh, that this is a uh, atomic broadcast that at least everybody's in sync when you when you have such inconsistent interaction who knows what's going to happen i mean you know you just just conflicting interaction we did not block and we did not have transactions we didn't go and have any locks okay so uh, so basically you know it, it as long as the state is consistent things are fine there's no inconsistency they all in the same state. But what happened is that the take operation was executed in a state in which it was not issued. It was issued when this guy's feet were here. Right? But it was executed after Alice's message was bounced, came, came, and then this guy was executed. So the main point is when you have atomic broadcast, you are going... You are going uh, uh, you're going, uh, can, can I find this guy here? 
Ha. Okay. So what really happened is that the command was not executed immediately. There were two conflicting commands executed. You can't help that. Okay, because they're, 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 they're not talking to each other or whatever. But we made sure that all replicas, they all saw the same effect of these conflicting commands. But because there's a conflict, what happened is not what might have been desired. Okay? Can you tell exactly? I came in late last time, so I'm not able to understand why it's not able to take the cupcake in the first place. Because you have to be in the path to take the cupcake. That's the rule. Isn't it like in the path? No. The feet are here. It's a little bit away. Okay. Fine. And when you say like minus 10, like I'm moving minus 10 in the x direction. Okay. With reference to what? Where, where I am right now. Zero. Where I am right now. Okay. Okay. So that's one of some of the issues that can arise. Actually, I'm going to need one of these windows again. I hope I can restore it. Uh, to show you guys another issue. Uh, yeah, I'll need this guy again. Now, how many, what do you guys think is the thread structure here? Since I can get it back. I'll, how many threads do I have in each of these processes and what kind of threads do we have? Okay, let's start client. Let's let's start server first. How many threads do you think I have in the server? One. One? Just just one is fine, right? Guy gets the messages and 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 uh, um, you, you know and you're the one who knows NIO, right? So you get you, you there's a server that just goes and receives messages and sends messages. It would, would it be useful to have more than one thread? Yes, if, if, the, if the request is like too frequent. If it's too frequent, then maybe you might want to have multiple threads if they are multiple processes. Yeah. But, but can you see a problem with consistency then? The whole idea is that we're trying to serialize things through a single, in a single way. If each thread is sending data, you know, one thread is sending data to these, these many people, one thread is sending data to the other set of people, we don't know how the threads will get divided, yeah. but then you'll get into consistency issues. Yes. Okay? Two on the client. Two on the client. Uh, so one thread is doing what? So one thread just listening for input from the keyboard. Yeah. And then one thread listening for changes to the state or something as well. And what about thread for sending the messages to the server? Uh, wouldn't that be the same one that would uh, yeah. 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 get? Keyboard input. Okay, is that what you want? That's good. What he's saying is that the guy who's listening to... So by the way, this is Java. You have an AWT uh, process there. So it, can we have uh, the AWT thread itself uh, maybe um, send data to the server? So it could it could happen, right? Yeah. And when we're using NIO, NIO sort of tries to take all your communication requests and sh channel them through one process. So the same thread both listens uh, for data and sends data to the to, to remote. So what we're doing is we're creating a connection between the client and the server. Okay, and the server has got one thread that listens to all data coming from all the connections. Okay, just one thread. And that's part of the reason why NIO, which is this library, is so efficient is because you don't have to create multiple threads, which takes also some resources. You know, thread, if you have only one processor, the thread scheduling just takes resources. Okay. So, um, so in fact, you can see the names of the threads. 
So when I go and say when I go and say move minus 10 0, you see this particular thread is blocked. It's the NIO client selecting thread. Okay? And when I say proceed, I'm really unblocking it. So what this guy does is really wait on a semaphore. Wait on an object, actually. And I go and say this, and it goes. Similarly, at the server end, when I go and say wait for send, uh, and I go and say minus 10, 0 again, first this guy unblocks, then you see the NIO server unblocking. Okay? And he'll unblock. Okay? So you see the thread structure somewhat. Now, why, why was that block? Because we were wait for stress send. check wait for send, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so when you guys do your demos, you can easily go and just take keyboard input. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to do it graphically, and uh, I was just having fun with, with these objects. Okay, so you guys know what's in, about wait and send, wait and notify in Java, right? That's what I'm using. Okay. Okay, now here's the other thing. What exactly is going from here to the server? When I say move minus 10, 0, that's just a string, a command. And that command is going to the server, right? Now, what the channel I have is a socket-like channel. It's like socket, except that it is non-blocking, okay? Which means it's stream-based. What I'm sending is, the, is, is separate commands. Move 10, 0, take 1, give 1, and so forth. What, what I've got is a stream channel. Can you guys see a problem with the, there's a mismatch somehow between the communication medium and what you're sending? The fact that there's a mismatch causes some problems, can cause problems. So, so yeah, I'm sending strings. Strings get, you know, I get, I send, so that's, that's kind of what I'm getting at. So what's really happening is that I'm sending strings. Strings get transferred into bytes. And then bytes get transferred back into strings. Okay, so there is some well-known routine that converts a byte buffer into a string. I use those. But the fact is that I'm sending multiple strings. I'm not sending a file. Okay. In, in the case of a file, each, each message is a part of a big, bigger logical chunk. What I'm sending is individual logical chunks that are collected together into a stream. So can you guys see something wrong, bad happening you, you know, as a result? Just like the possibility of two strings are coming in at the same time, there's no, there's no deciphering which goes with which strings. Two. two strings, because what I'm when, when what does it mean for the channel in the server to be active? When when is data available at the at, at the server end? Whenever something is available, whenever non-zero set of bytes are available, it doesn't know that it should wait for a move command or a take command or whatever. So whenever there is some data available, okay, so it could read part of a command, possibly potentially if somehow the command gets fragmented into two messages, which is not going to happen. Okay? Or what may happen is that that's how networking works. You try to combine strings into one. Uh, you try to send, often coalesce different messages into one packet and send the packet across. Okay? And then at the other end, this guy gets move minus 10, 0, and take one as sort of one, one, one sequence, and it doesn't know what to do. Okay? So you notice that I've got mark commands here. Mark commands means that I'm actually marking the end of the command for the other end, other end, so that after each command I put a little comma maybe or a, or a, I don't remember what character I put. And the other end goes and says, okay, I, I'm expecting always a sequence of commands. And it goes and uses a split function to split the thing into multiple chunks. And if there's only one thing, fine. If there's multiple things, it separates that. Okay? And if I don't do that, Okay, let's see what can happen. Guys, remember which one I, that was a console window. Here we go. 
let me not mark and execute E. Oh. Wait for send, proceed. Wait for send, proceed. Did anything happen? Bob, wait for send, proceed. Nothing happened. Did I put it into some funny state here? Oh! Did I, what, what did I do wrong? Oh, did I do it? Huh. Okay, so I think because I didn't mark things, you got this error, yeah. which is what I wanted to show. I'm, I'm a little unsure on how that fixed the problem because it seems like even if you have like markers at the end of your strings, the strings could still be read in like half at a time. Yeah, that I'm just hoping that won't happen. It doesn't happen. Okay. The string is so small that. So will what? Happen. What is the point of the marker then? If it's when when it gets combined. Okay. Com combination is much more likely than the split. So, like, basically, it receives two commands before it's able to, uh, or it tries to execute before it's received an entire command. That that problem will not happen. Okay, what exactly is the problem that you're... The problem is what's happening is that in a loop, I go and execute a bunch of commands. Yeah. At the other end, I get, rather than one command at a time, I get n commands at a time. I do not get half a command at a time. I mean just so happens. If I really want to do, fix that problem, I've got to do a really good job, which is what... It just took a, several commands as a single command, and yeah. then it runs. Okay. Yeah. So basically you're saying that whatever the buffer abstraction doesn't have a message abstraction. Yes. It's a stream abstraction. You know? The buffer abstraction is a stream abstraction. So networking, you, you, it would be more like you're thinking it is a UDP rather than TCP. Yes, if I was doing UDP... But even in UDP, it can split up my message into multiple parts. This is really RMI. When I, do serial, when I go and do serialization, I have to put a, you know, I have to always send with the message to size. To do this problem right, after each message, I have to send size. And at the other end, it will not read, and it will not deliver a message until size bytes have been received and, and it will go and deliver size number of bytes at one time. I don't want you guys to do that. You know, because that's just a pain, and and uh, so I'm just saying it's fine if you just go and assume, and 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 the main point is I want you guys to realize the pitfall here. That these things can happen, okay? And what you get in terms of performance, you might lose in terms of correctness. So basically, instead of big one, big one. So the other end is actually, you know, there's an in coupler and out coupler. The out coupler goes and takes the commands and puts a little marker at the end of each command. The in coupler goes and splits the stuff and then goes and delivers each one. Okay. Basically, you say you should have a, like a consistent uh, encoder and decoder on, on each side so that. You don't you don't just send a simple simple uh, message. You uh, decorate this message with, with some method and uh, include more metadata inside it, Ex so that on the receive side you can check if the message is uh, compromised or yes. not. No, it won't get compromised. We will assume that TCP/IP is going to make sure that the message was delivered. It's just a question. I'm just saying that a lot of this course is on on the abstraction. What communication abstraction do you have? And how does it match what the client needs? The whole idea of sockets came around in Unix and was based on the file abstraction. The socket is like a file. And, and in fact, the sockets, when they were created, they were, the, the application people all thought uh, was uh, you know, sending files across a file server. So that, is the, that was a canonical ex application that everybody worked on. So the file abstraction, this abstraction is not working very nicely for this particular application. And I'm going to go next to the RMI abstraction 
which solves some problems but creates other problems of performance. Then I'll go to the gypsy abstraction, which is a system I built, which solves, which tries to be a compromise between these two. Okay? But I just wanted to just show you what can go on. Okay? Okay, we are ready to end, end the NIO uh, demo. And I can just start getting rid of these windows and find the kill window. I can't just kill my Eclipse application because these processes will just hang around. So I launched it from here and I have to go and terminate all. As it turns out, this is very interesting. Um, if I just kill the Eclipse application, the Eclipse application, Eclipse process can never know when its children died just because of certain limitations. So it can't go and, uh, sorry, the Eclipse application cannot kill its children. Okay, so I started everything out from this process. Here I know what my children are, so when I terminate this, it will terminate all the children. And the Eclipse can't, so that's, that's an interesting limitation. So that's why I have to do it this way. Okay, we'll go to Eclipse again. Okay, no, hang on. I need to first finish the re recording here. So I stop.